احمده نح ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هل اتاك حديث الغاشيه وجوه يومئذ خاشعه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين يا رب Today we will study the ghashiyah which in some of your uh, the Qur'ans that you have is going to be uh, right after Surah Al-Ala. And Surah Al-Ghashi and Surah Al-Ala are twin surahs. And one of the reasons that I want to go over this surah is because this was one of the surahs that the Prophet Sallallahu he really loved this surah. As you remember, uh, after Jum'ah Khutbah, the Prophet Sallallahu used to read Surah Al-Ala and Surah Al-Ghashiya. Also in the Eid Dayt, in the Eid prayers, Surah Al-Ala and Surah Al-Ghashiya. And very often the Prophet Sallallahu used to love reciting Surah Al-Ala and Surah Al-Ghashiya. And to understand Surah Al-Ala, actually these two, like I said, these two surahs, they complement each other. <coughs> so, رَبِّ شَحْ لِي صَدْرِ وَيَسِلْ لِي أَمْرِ وَحْلُ الْأُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِ يَبْدَهُ قَوْلِ أَمِينِ يَا رَبِّ So, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْغَاشِيَةِ Now this surah is connected to the previous surah. Okay? So just keep this in mind. And today we're going to have a fast paced study of this Qur'an. Now if you go to Surah Al-A'la and you go to ayah number 10. سَيَذَكَّرُوا what? سَيَذَكَّرُوا مَنْ يَخْشَى Right? Those who have khashiyah of Allah, they will remember Allah. Okay? And then it says, سَيَذَكَّرُوا مَنْ يَخْشَى وَيَتَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَى And the person who is uh, who has who has very bad fortune, future, his ashqa is the one who doesn't remember Allah. Say Zakkaru Mayyaksha. This Khashia, just remember this. Allah is mentioning the people who have Khashia in dunya. Okay? In this ayah, ayah number one, Hal Ataka Hadithul Ghashia did the news of the thing that is overwhelming. So the main theme of this surah is the overwhelmingness of things. Now just watch how this literally opens itself. To explain to you the overwhelming nature of things. And you know when it says hal, it means it's asking for your an answer. It's asking for an answer. Ya Muhammad, hal ataka hadithul ghashiyah. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has the event, the narration, the report of the thing that's overwhelming come to you? Wujuhun yawma idhin khashiyah. On that day, some faces will be what? Khashiyah. Over there, say a dhakkabu, what? The believers, they have khashiyah in this life. But those who disbelieve will have khashiyah in the next life. And another thing very important about the surah, the literary aspect, it's the face that's being talked about. What's being talked about? The face. Just remember this. Because when they were, this is connected to the previous surahs. Now I'm going to give you an example. When they used to be called to Islam and they used to reject it, where did they show it? They showed it with their face, right? Their emotions, their hatred, their dislike, their, 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 their meanness came out from their face. And if you go back to Surah Ala, it says what? وَيَتَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَى الَّذِي يَسْلَى النَّارِ الْكُبْرَى ثُمَّ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَى قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى This is the reason, by the way, the Prophet used to love this surah. Because what does it say? وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ And he remembered the name of Allah and then فَصَلَّى Then he prayed. You have the Jummah Khutbah. You do dhikr of Allah to Jummah Khutbah. Right? إِذَا نُدِيَتِ الصَّلَاةِ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ فَسَوْا إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ فَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى In the same way, وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى When you do wudu, you're remembering Allah and then you pray. And in the same way, you do the sunnah prayers and then you pray. وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا But you prefer the life of this world. Meaning, remember this, your struggle in this world, you prefer this struggle in this world. Just remember this. You, str you prefer the what? بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Now this, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى is the what this surah is explaining, this next surah. What does it mean? You preferred this life. And you, even though the hereafter is so much better. So just remember this. هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْغَاشِيَةِ 
That day, the faces, they will be overwhelmed from fear. And their faces are being talked about. What? Aamilatun nasiba. Aamilatun, weary and tired from what? From the work of dunya. You know, you go to sleep after you're dead and you wake up and you feel refreshed sometimes. And you go to sleep and you wake up and you're still tired. You see? So Allah is saying, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا Because like I said, these two surahs are interconnected. You chose this life to the next life and then you st- means what? You struggled for what? For this life, you struggled. All of your struggle was for this life. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا And then over here, then what will be a result? عَامِلَةٌ نَاصِبَ Working hard and نَاصِبَ نَاصِبَ means two things. But over here in this ayah, it means to be weary. So you're so tired, you're exhausted. Right? They come out of their graves, they come out of their graves in the Day of Judgment, and they will be what? Overwhelmed with the hard work that they did. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا They will be overwhelmed with the hard work of this life. Okay? And نَاصِبَ And they will be weary. They will be so weary. Now these terms are going to come again. Just watch how beautiful this surah is. So, عَامِلَةٌ نَاصِبَ Where do you see this عَامِلَةٌ نَاصِبَ Where is it apparent? It's apparent in their faces. Okay? تَصْلَى نَارًا حَامِيَ Now this ta of tasla, tasla, the ta of tasla is, is going back to the face again. Their face, you know generally when you hit, when, you, when you're going to hit somebody, they're going to first what? Defend, right? But over here the opposite is happening. Instead of defending, their faces are being put forward. Their faces are being put into the burning fire to go into the fire first. تَصْلَى نَارًا حَامِيَةٌ And they will enter, their faces will enter the blazing fire. Okay? Again, what are they overwhelmed with? They're overwhelmed with tiredness. They're so tired that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts them in the fire, they're, they're not even able to defend their faces, even though their faces are going first. Right? تَصْلَى نَارًا حَامِيَةٌ تُسْقَى مِنْ عَيْنٍ آنِيَةٌ Now this, you see, now... تُسْقَى مِنْ عَيْنٍ آنِيَةٌ And then they... تُسْقَى تُسْقَى Here again, the ta is face, referring to what? The face. The, the faces, the well, the well that has the burning water will just shoot up into their faces. It's not that they're drinking from the well, that's not what it means. تُسْقَى مِنْ عَيْنٍ آنِيَةٌ The, fa- the, the hot water is just going... You're going to try to catch maybe a sip. And this min, تُسْقَى min, This min shows that their wells in different places, meaning they're not everywhere, they're, you have to look for them. Now they're in this court, they're overwhelmed with the fire, they're overwhelmed with tiredness, and then they search out. Min shows that they search it out. It could have been, تُسْقَى عَيْنٍ آنِيَةٌ instead of مِنْ عَيْنٍ آنِيَةٌ But تُسْقَى مِنْ عَيْنٍ آنِيَةٌ means that they searched out this well to drink from it. And all this water did was it what? Just shoot up on their faces to burn it even more. Can you see how vivid this is? The, this, uh, you sh- I mean, if our kids, if the, you know, the, the, we talk about liberal arts and language and liberal arts study, studying Cinderella, this, I mean, this, in a few words, how this expresses the, the powerfulness of these words. So, تَصْلَى نَارًا حَامِيَةٌ تُسْقَى مِنْ عَيْنٍ آنِيَةٌ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ تَعَامٌ They will have no ta'am. And ta'am is specifically food that grows from the land. So, لَيْسَ لَهُمْ تَعَامٌ They will have no food that gives any nourishment. لا تسقى ليس, ليس, ليس by the way. And this is also, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings, you know, Allah brought the picture of something in the future. But laysa is a word of present. Laysa is for what? Present. So it's like the camera, it's brought you in. The, the, the story has brought you into the situation as if it's in the present. Okay? Laysa lahum ta'am. So there is no food for them. Illa min dhari' Except for dhari' Dhari' has two meanings. But uh, one, is, the most important one is thorns. Okay? There are thorns. So what are these thorns? These are special thorns that the Prophet that were there in the desert in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. These were thorns that no one could eat. No animal could eat it. This was a thorn that even if some animal went near, it would get bloody. It would get what? Bloody. The only animal that was able to eat it was the camel. The only animal that was able to eat this thorny 
bush was what? This camel. So they then said, the kuffar, they said as a response, Oh, this is good. We'll become strong like the camel because it will have dhari'ah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Oh, this is what you're saying? So just watch. لَيْسَ لَهُمْ تَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ They will have no food there other than the thorns. لَا يُسْمِنُ وَلَا يُغْنِي مِنْ It will neither nourish them. You think it's going to give you power and make you strong? No, no, no. Yeah, the, these thorns... They can give this camel this energy, but it's not going to give you this energy. And it will benefit you nothing in, for, in regards to hunger. So you'll be overwhelmed so much, you'll be looking for these wells, and this scorching water will come into your what? Faces, right? And then even when you eat, where are you eating from? You're eating from your face, right? From your mouth, okay? This shows that the face includes the mouth. And this shows that now this is an interesting question because we know to do wudu with your wujuh. Your face is fart. It's a shart of the wudu. But is doing the uh, gargle, well, I don't want to go into the fiqh aspect of this because I want to stay in the literary aspect. But doing the washing your face, the gargle of your mouth and nose, is this sunnah or fart? But, you, but if we say it is part of the face or not? Is, it, is the teeth part of the face and the nose part of the face? But this is sunnah. How do we know this? This, inshallah, is for another discussion I can't have right now. But, لَيْسَ لَهُمْ تَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ لَا يُسْمِنُ وَلَا يُغْنِي مِنْ And then, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the opposite face, the face of the opposite people, right? These are the people that are overwhelmed. These are the people who what? بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا These are the people who work so hard and they're weary and tired, and they're being punished overwhelmingly in there. Now Allah says, now Allah makes this contrast. <laughs> On that day there will be some faces that are what? They're delightful, they're, joy, they're, they're full of joy and happy and refreshed. They came out of their grave, right? And what? They're what? Refreshed. They are fresh. <laughs> and for their effort, they are what? Radia. They are opposite of Amilatun Nasiba. They worked hard. They, they came out of the graves feeling like they've worked hard and weary and tired. Over here, Lisa'iha. For what they did in dunya, right? What? Choosing the akhirah over dunya meant that when they come out of their graves, Lisa'iha Radia. For their efforts, they are Radia. They're happy with the efforts that they've made, right? And they're delighted and they're joyful and they're refreshed and they come out of the grave fresh. In jannahs that are alia, why? Because it's the opposite. Over there, the water was going from the bottom to their faces, right? And over here, when you will be in jannah, and this is also in many of the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that jannah will be actually on top of a hill, okay? And water will be coming, it'll be like waterfall. Fi jannatin, what? Alia. Your jannah will be high. Why also? Because we, we know this in psychology of real estate and stuff. You get, when you're up high, you can see the what? The scenery of everything you own, right? Everybody likes this window in their house where they can survey, you know, my land. <laughs> survey, have a survey of my land. Survey of everything I own, right? If you, see, if you own so much and you can't see it, then it's not as delightful as if... You're on top of a hill, and from the top of the hill you can see everything that you own. And then there's this waterfall coming down. You'll see this becomes more clear. Fi jannatin aliya. In jannas that are what? That are raised, they're high, right? And then La Tasma'u fiha laghiya. And you will hear in it no vain talk. Why is this mentioned? Because you can have the best environment, the most delightful environment, but you can still get hurt by people around you. Right? You can be in the most what? Perfect place, the most delightful place. You could be in a billion dollar house, but that will not stop from other people that are around you to hurt you. But here it is, you have the most delightful place, but no one is going to say anything to hurt your feelings. This is the idea behind it. People sometimes wonder why Allah says this over and over again. Because the idea is that you will be in, in these residential gardens that are perfect, and no one's going to say anything to hurt your feelings. No one's going to hurt you. 
right? La tasmau fiha lahiya. There's going to be no vain talk, no no cussing, no making fun of, no mocking, no joking, all of that. Okay? Fiha ainun jariya. In it will be wells that are what? Jariya. Now you know when you go to uh, a hotel, all of these expensive hotels. I'm sure you've been in there. What do they have? For these executives, right? CEOs. Even and this is this is the perfection of Quran that even today we want basically the same things. You go into the hotel, first of all, you hear this waterfall always. Like they always have the fountain of the water. Because you know, we know through 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 human studies that human beings love the water the sound of the water. It's very tranquil. They even make CDs now where you can just put in and hear the the, the sound of the water. So you go into these hotels, what do they have? They have the sound of the water. Right? And then they got a bar. Right? And they got what? Then they got these nice seats you can sit in, right? Very comfortable seats, right? And people are serving you. And so this is this is what the Quran is saying. When you will go, right, you're gonna come from this journey from dunya, right? Because what will actually happen in Jannah, we don't know. This is just Nuzulam min Rahim. This is just the beginning. So you go there and whether you were at the time of the Prophet or you're today, human beings want the same thing. They want to be sitting by the bar, they want to hear the waterfall, they want to have cushions, relaxed atmosphere, right? Just the same thing human beings want. And so that picture is that picture that is so reminiscent of human nature is, is painted over and over again. It doesn't matter if you're living today or at the time of the Prophet, they wanted to, you know, why? Because when you drink alcohol, like the Quran says, it has some benefits, right? It has some benefits, but it's shara is more than the benefits. And one of the benefits of alcohol is when you drink it, right? What happens? That, you know, you start relaxing, the worries and the stress of the day go away, right? All those things, those inhibitions go away, basically. That's what it does. So, la tasma'u fiha laghiya, fiha aynun jariya. And then, you have this water running, and there's this waterfall. That's the best scenery you can have. And what's the best scenery? The best scenery is of the world is the scenery of what? Waterfall, right? And you're there and you're seeing this. And then, fiha sururun marfu'ah. Marfu'ah, by the way, this fiha sururun marfu'ah, there will be these chairs that will be raised for you. But marfu'ah, it shows that it will be custom made to your height. Marfua shows it'll be raised. Marfua rafa'a means to raise. Marfua raised for you, custom raised for you. Okay, so that where you will be comfortable, they will be raised for you. Fiha sururum marfua wa akwabum maudua, and what uh, the even till today what you know these uh, wine uh, the wine what uh, the glass of wine, it's still reminiscent for human nature. Whether it was at the time of the pro it's the same goblets. The same, you know, this thing that filling the alcohol to the brim, right? And this thin little lot, uh, glass. And they even use it in bars to decorate their bars, right? They put these glasses to show you what? That, this, that you can have this full cup, right? And And the cushions will be raised, custom made for you. The, 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 the glass will be put in front of you by others, not you. But others by by somebody, Maudua again shows somebody has put it there. Wada'a to put down. Maudua has been put down for you. Wa akwabu maudua wa namariku masfufa. And what else human beings like? You know, uh, masfufa is wa namariku masfufa. These are cushions. You know the small cushions you put in the back of you to like take a get back technically, right? Right. Yes. So to, they'll be in rows. Whether it was the time of the Prophet or today, you go to a furniture store. I mean, this is the things we like. Want couches, right size, right feel, right? And then you want like cushions behind you, and then everything is set for you. You're in, you're on top of the hill serving your waterfall and your land. And the other side, what's happening? Those people prefer the dunya. dunya. Their state is what, and your state is sitting here. This is this is. You know, as the Quran says, this is what, if you want to race, race for this, right? And then what? Carpets. Even till today, what? Everybody loves the, the exotic carpets, right? 
you, a CEO room will have that exotic carpet. So you have those cushions, you have those exotic carpets, right? And those carpets, and the carpets, they will be what? Spread out for you, exotic carpets spread out for you. And look how Allah, in just few words, has captured so many aesthetic aspects of human nature. The, the, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands the, how human being can be comfortable. And how human beings, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands in just few words that no one, no one can do this. No human being can in just few words write all this that will, you know, you carpets and small little cushions and custom made seats to sit on and, you know, as, wine ready to be served and you have your landscape. No one understands human nature that, that precisely. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands human nature that precisely. And so, <clears throat> in here, from a fiqhi perspective is, some ideas of how we should treat our guests also, by the way. Just, you know, this, this tells us how the guests should be treated, right? So anyway, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now changes the direction. You, you, you see this? Okay, you don't get this. If you don't get it, okay, fine. I'm not asking you to believe in me. I'm not asking you to believe in Islam. But at least can you know, see this much? At least can you see this much? أَفَلَا يَنْذُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ Did you not see? see? One is when the Qur'an says, مِمَّا خُلِقْ مِمَّا خُلِقْ Right? أَفَلَا يَنْذُرُ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقْ Did not man see of what he has been created? كَيْفَ means how beautifully, how strangely, how awesomely, right? Can you at least admit this is awesome? Can you at least, the كَيْفَ is, is just, can, is, is about the object itself. Can you, at least see how beautifully this has been created, how aesthetically this has been created. Afala yandurun. Yandurun means what? There, you know, tara means to see. Tara means to see. Yandurun means to stare, to observe, to study. You know, <coughs> wa, uh, uh, wa, uh, when it says, wa uh, agrakna ala fir'auna wa antum tandurun. When we drowned the people of Fir'aun, wa antum tandurun. Meaning you're observing it. You were observing it. You're not just seeing it. You're able to observe it. Okay? So, afala yandurun. Are you not able to observe? Ilal ibili kayfa khuliqat. The camel, how we have created, how beautiful it is. Right? It, it's how strange it is, how awesome it is. This animal that's the biggest domestic animal that Allah has created. Yet, it can come down, Allah made it so it comes down specifically on its what? Knees. Right? As big as it is, it's created to come down. It has a special foam, you know, a special layer of foam, uh, or you could say hair, where it comes down on its two knees so you can get on top of, get on top of it, right? So this is, don't you see how beautifully we created this? This, you know, this uh, ship of the sea, uh, is, is a ship of the desert, that it can carry you so long, it doesn't need anything. It can eat what the dhari'ah, the thorns that no one, no other animal will eat. It will eat those thorns to survive and have nourishment, and it will. And it and this animal can humble itself for the needs of the human being. This big animal that it can kill, but even it can kill a human being. It's strong enough to kill a human being, but it will even listen to the the commands of a child. Huh? Okay. So afala yanduruna ila al kaifa. خُلِقَتْ How, did you not see how we've created this? وَإِلَى And by the way, in the people that study evolution, the camel is one animal that they just don't get. They, they just can't place where it's coming from, which, you know how they try to place everything that before this animal was this animal and before this, they can't place the camel anywhere. Because it's just so strange, you can't place it anywhere. وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ And to the sky, how we have, huh? Raised it. But also what is being mentioned here, Rufi'at, how we have what? Raised it. So this sky, how we've raised it, has two, two explanations. One is that this sky that we've raised it, when one day that is on top will come down. And then of course how we have raised the sky. Because according to the Quran, the universe was harder to create than the human being. Are you a harder creation or the as-sama, meaning the universe? Okay? وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ Don't you see how we have raised the heavens? وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ Now over there, if you notice, the dhari' had to do with the camel. That was mentioned in the 
previous part. Over here, Nusibat Amilatun Nalsiba. Okay? That same mountain, Wa ilal jibali kaifa nusibat. And to the mountain, how we have pegged it in. Right? The same word nasaba means to be pegged in firmly, means to become wobbly. Because on the day of judgment, the same jibal will become wobbly. Right? The same what? The same mountain that is pegged on the earth will become wobbly. وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ Sutihat also has two meanings. One is sataha, which means level. Have you not seen how we've spread out the earth? Sataha also means, in Arabic they say, like the top of the roof. So the earth becomes our roof when we go under the ground. Right? وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ Don't you see how we have put, begun to put you under the ground? That this is your home? So it has both of these meanings. Okay. وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ Over in Surah Al-Ala, the main theme of Surah Al-Ala, by the way, the main theme of سَبِّحِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى The main theme of that surah is dhikr. Is dhikr. And the way to do dhikr is first you see the greatness of Allah's creation, and then when you're saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, so for example, سَبِّحِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى Declare the perfection of your Rabb, who is Al-A'la. Okay, this is in response to when Fir'aun says, "Ana Rabbukumul A'la." This is him saying it. But over here, Allah is saying, "You say it. You declare my." Uh, why you should declare His perfection? Because He is Al A'la. He is the Most High, right? So, "Sabr Hisma Rabbika Al A'la, Al Ladi Khalaqa Fasawa, Wal Ladi Qadra Fahada." What? This is His creation. Wal Ladi Qadra Fahada. Al Ladi. سَبِّ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى الَّذِي خَلَقَ فَسَوَّى وَالَّذِي قَدَّرَ فَحَدَى وَالَّذِي أَخْرَجَ الْمَرْعَى The one who took out the pastures. الَّذِي أَخْرَجَ الْمَرْعَى فَجَعَلَهُ ثَاءً أَحْوَى سَنُقْرِوكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْجَحْرَ وَمَا يَغْفَى وَنُيَسِّرُكَ لِلْ يُسْرَى Those people who remember Allah, Allah will make the easy path easy for them. سَيَذَكَّرُوا مَنْ يَخْشَى وَيَتَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَى الَّذِي يَصْلَى النَّارَ الْكُبْرَى ثُمَّ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَى قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا This is the theme of Sutul Ala. You will not declare Allah's perfection if you're not a person of dhikr. If you prefer this life, you don't have the khashia to do dhikr of Allah, to remember Allah. And how do you do that? الذي خل خلق فسوى سب اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فحدا over there the creation came first and then the people who do ذكر and those who don't okay over here the creation of Allah comes afterwards but the results of those people who did or did not do ذكر comes first you get it you see you see what I'm saying right so the results of the people who who did ذكر سَيَذَكَّرُ مَنْ يَخْشَى Those who have khashia, they will remember Allah. And over here is, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْغَاشِيَ وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَ إِذٍ خَاشِعَ Those people who didn't do dhikr, they will be in khashia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day. They chose those, so this is the result of that, either choosing to do it or not. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ وَأَبْقَى This is the, you know, this is the choices you have. And then the result of the choices in Surah Al-Ghashiyah. Uh, and there are many other themes, like I talked about the face and being overwhelmed. Those that are overwhelmed with punish are overwhelmed with punish, punishment. And those that are overwhelmed with delight are overwhelmed with delight, right? So over here, but over there, uh, so over here it says, فَذَكِّرْ O Muhammad sallallahu You remind them. You are a reminder of them. إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرُ You are the one, who else is going to remind them? You are the one who's going to remind them. لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْتِرُ You are not somebody who is going to be in charge of them. You're not in charge of them. They have to make their own decisions themselves. So, لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْتِرُ Meaning, this is their choice. This is the point of this. Your job is to convey, and then this is what's going to be said. إِلَّا مَنْ تَوَلَّا وَكَفَرُ But if they turn away and they reject the truth, 
فَيُعَذِّبُهُ اللَّهُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَكْبَرِ So Allah is saying, okay, then just know, I'm warning you, this is the concluding remarks now, then I will severely punish you. فَيُعَذِّبُهُ اللَّهُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَكْبَرِ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا إِيَابَهُمْ And for sure they will, to us will be there, return. You can't escape this. Your return is back to us. Make the choice. ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا حِسَابَهُمْ But I, you remind them and I'll take their hisab. I will take their hisab. So now this is Sutul Ghashiyah. I hope that I was able to convey some of the aesthetics and the literary aspects of this surah. So inshallah we will end here for today. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِوَلَكُمْ وَلِسَارِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ آمِينَ يَا رَبِّ